Based on the latest ensemble member runs, there's now beginning to be a higher amount of confidence that we're going to see Tropical Storm Emily develop in the main development region. Take a look at the Global Tropics Hazards Outlook for this week, and we do see that the Climate Prediction Center is forecasting that there should be an enhanced risk of tropical cyclone development right over this area by late this week. So for the Caribbean, you definitely need to watch out for that possibility. In terms of the probability the Climate Prediction Center is giving of a tropical cyclone developing over this area, if we were to take a look at the percentages, we do see that there's around a 40% chance, which is around a moderate chance at this time of tropical cyclone development. And I wouldn't be surprised based on the latest um, runs of the ensemble members that we see this chance only increase as we head further and further into the week now that we're seeing a growing amount of confidence between the most reliable ensemble members that we could see a tropical storm so here's what the latest run of the GFS model is stating at this time we do have a tropical wave right over the main development region and this tropical wave is expected to linger around this area for quite some time and then another tropical wave will sort of combine with this area of convective activity to create an even bigger area of moisture as well as convection which should which could allow for tropical cyclone development over this era. We do see that right around the Wednesday time frame, July 19th, we see a well-defined low pressure system right over the middle of the main development region. And we see another tropical wave right at its doorstep, continuing to head further westward. And eventually this convective activity should combine, could, should combine in this envelope of moisture to create a more convective environment and a higher amount of lift surrounding a center of circulation. So it could, so as early as this weekend, we could potentially see a tropical storm in our hands. And while the GFS model eventually does expect it to weaken just slightly as it approaches the Caribbean, the GFS model expects the storm system to re-intensify to an even stronger storm by the time this approaches the Caribbean. And we see that this becomes a well-defined and I'll say a pretty strong tropical storm by the time this approaches the Caribbean islands where you could, of course, experience heavy rain, gusty winds, and we see this impact portions of Puerto Rico and the Dominican Republic right around Wednesday of next week. But this is very far out, so take it with a huge grain of salt. But it's definitely interesting that the GFS model is now forecasting a tropical storm in our hands within the relatively short-term future, which gives me a higher amount of confidence we could see a tropical storm or at least some sort of powerful tropical wave impact the Caribbean with heavy rainfall. So you definitely need to be aware of this possibility right around the Caribbean islands. However, there's definitely a lot of things we need to consider to determine if this has a good possibility of developing into a tropical storm because right now the European model isn't as confident that we're going to see as powerful of an area of moisture due to several different factors. So while the European model is also forecasting that a pretty strong tropical wave should move over the main development region by later this week, we, we're going to see that um, that the, moisture, the aerial moisture doesn't necessarily develop into a well-defined low pressure system. We do see a low pressure system right around the Wednesday time frame at around the same time period as GFS model, but we don't really see that low pressure system strengthen much more than that. And it's due to the fact that there's plenty of dry air just to the north of it, which is expected to inhibit tropical cyclone development in the European model scenario by a lot more than what the GFS model is forecasting because we do see that as we approach the late week, the dry air just becomes too much for this trough to handle and we see the air stabilize around the center of circulation to a point where there isn't enough convective activity for any chance of, of a tropical storm to develop as it approaches the Caribbean as the dry air just becomes too much for this area of moisture to, to, to contend with. So we don't really see Tropical Storm Emily develop out of that tropical wave, but it's a different story when we take a look at the GFS model. 
Comparing the relative humidity map to the GFS model forecast, we see the clear difference that there's a lot less dry air in the GFS model scenario and a lot more instability surrounding the center of circulation for uh, for the pressure to lower along the surface as well as the wind speed to increase and for the center of circulation to become a lot more closed off for the potential of a tropical cyclone to exist in the GFS model scenario where we do see that the dry air while there's still a decent amount that's definitely slowing down its shredding process as it continues ahead further westward we see plenty of dry air just to the north of it thanks to this very strong bermuda ridge that's steering a lot of saharan dust towards the main development region but we do see that it's nowhere near to the extent of the european models um, forecast when it comes to the amount of dry air and we see that this in the gfs model scenario as a result of the lack of dry air compared to the european model we see this develop into a tropical storm approaching puerto rico and dominican republic so the amount of dry air that will move into the main development region over the next several days will be key in determining if we're going to see a tropical storm or not um, later during the week. And that's going to be very difficult to forecast. We're going to need to see how strong the ridging will be, how much the hair and dust and how strong the winds will be to determine if we're going to see just enough dry air over this area. So I'll keep you guys updated regarding any changes in the forecast. The position of this ridge will be key so i'll definitely so stay tuned for more updates regarding the amount of dry air that moves over this area if we were to take a look at the 500 millibar geopotential height anomaly over the northern atlantic for the european models forecast you're going to see that there's plenty of stability right over the a main development region which should allow for more dry air to exist in this area in general compared to the gfs model since we're seeing a higher amount of ridging a higher amount of sinking air so it would be a lot more difficult for a tropical wave to move over this area without being um, without encountering a high level of stability thanks to the amount of ridging we're seeing so we're definitely going to need to pay close attention to how strong this ridge will be over the next several days to determine the amount of dry air the gfs model is showing that there's going to be less um there's going to be less stability and less dry air since the ridging will be a lot weaker which means that there's going to be more of an upward lift over the northern atlantic over the next several days which is the reason why it wants to develop a tropical storm so i'll keep you guys updated regarding the amount of ridging that will exist over the northern atlantic over the next several days the bad news is, however, let's say if there's enough moisture for this storm to intensify and for um, there's enough moisture for the possibility for this storm to intensify, as well as the fact that there might not be a lot of ridging to bring a lot of stable air to the center of circulation. The bad news is that there won't be a lot of wind shear to really prevent this storm from developing if all the other factors surrounding the storm were favorable for tropical cyclone development because we do see that the amount of wind shear is expected to be very light by the time we approach this weekend and into early next week and that certainly would raise the possibility of tropical cyclone development and it isn't much better when we take a look at the european model the amount of wind shear over the main development region is very light so that gives me a higher amount of confidence that there will at least be a chop uh, the possibility of tropical cyclone development it really all, just all depends on the amount of dry air if there's enough moisture then i would expect that we will see a tropical storm emily develop because the wind shear is going to be light enough for the possibility to exist it might not happen rapidly because of course it takes time for areas of convective activity to find the, the center of circulation and to converge all that energy around the center of circulation but i do expect that within due time in an area where there's plenty of moisture there is a likely chance we're going to see tropical storm emily because wind shear is just that light which makes me very concerned for the caribbean if we were to see that possibility i'll keep you guys updated um over the next several days once the certainty becomes higher regarding the amount of moisture that will move over this area definitely what could be a major inhibiting factor for the pos um for this tropical wave in in developing into a tropical storm is the fact that there's going to be plenty of saharan dust that will move towards the caribbean 
over the next several days however the problem with this is that the, you see that this large area of dust is very limited when it comes to how large it is and we see that this dust eventually moves a little bit too far to the west and by the time this tropical, um, tropical wave moves into the main development region it might not necessarily experience or encounter this large area of saharan dust and this very concentrated area of saharan dust as it could be right in this small area where there's barely um any saharan dust to create enough of a temperature inversion to stabilize the low level center so that would definitely be very concerning if this chop if the, this saharan dust doesn't stay over the main development region for as long as we expect and moves faster um, to the west a lot more quickly than we expect because that would certainly raise the possibility of tropical cyclone development so as i'll say that as of right now it seems like the sahara the worst of the saharan dust will move a little bit too far west for this to have um, um, um as major of an impact when it comes to the tropical cyclone development we're gonna need to see if there's a more saharan dust right behind this tropical wave by the time it approaches the main development region but as of right now it might be limited um when it comes to its impact which definitely makes me very concerned that we could see tropical storm emily Taking a look at the seven day graphical tropical weather outlook provided from the National Hurricane Center, we do see that there is some tropical depression dawn, but it isn't expected to impact um, any land directly, so it isn't much to worry about. And in terms of this next tropical wave, the National Hurricane Center isn't giving this a chance of this developing just yet. However, I wouldn't be surprised that as early as tomorrow, we begin to see the National Hurricane Center shift its forecast and give at least a possibility that we could see tropical storm emily somewhere in the main development region but as early as this week we're just gonna need to wait and see if national hurricane center continues to see um a consistent um consensus from the ensemble members that there could be tropical storm emily develop um developing so we're just gonna need to wait and see what the national hurricane center says however i do believe that at least some point during this week we will see um, the National Hurricane Center give a chance of tropical cyclone development. Take a look at what the ensemble members are stating at this time. Um, first, taking a look at the GFS model ensemble members. It does become fairly concerning because we do have a decent number of ensemble members wanting to develop this into tropical storm status. And we even see some that want to develop this into strong tropical storm status, a borderline hurricane status and it does impact some of the caribbean islands which could be concerning for the more long-term future and not only for the caribbean islands but maybe for the united states southeast if we were to see it take this northwest turn like the gfs ensemble members are are implying right now we're gonna need to wait and see if this keeps up but it's definitely something you need to be aware of somewhere in the caribbean islands it's still um, too far to say for certain what impacts are going to experience how strong this tropical wave will be by the time it approaches you guys but i will at least say that you the caribbean will likely experience at least some sort of impacts from this tropical wave but the question will remain where exactly um, it'll impact the caribbean and how strong it'll be once it approaches the caribbean islands so i'll keep you guys updated regarding the changes in the forecast but you definitely need to be aware of this at this time over the caribbean islands even with the european model on some members some do want to take this to near or over tropical storm status although it isn't the ensemble members are expecting um storms uh um, a storm that is as strong as uh, GFS model on some members, but it's at least something to be aware of that just because the main European model isn't forecasting that it wants to develop a tropical storm does not mean it's completely disregarding the possibility of tropical storm development. So this is still something to keep in mind with the European model as well that it's at least it's at least acknowledging that there's a possibility of a tropical storm developing so the caribbean definitely needs to be on high alert um, for that possibility so here's my overall forecast when it comes to the potential of tropical storm emily developing and impacting caribbean so i will say that it is likely that this tropical wave 
will impact the Caribbean in some way, shape, or form, but still a little bit uncertain to say um, we're going to see this develop into a tropical storm. Um, that, um, what really will be key is the amount of Saharan dust and dry air that will exist over the main development region um, because if there's enough dry air then it's unlikely we're going to see this develop into a tropical storm but if there's a lot more moisture associated with this trough than anticipated then we're more likely to see a tropical storm but the Caribbean definitely needs to be aware of this at this point but um, that's it for now guys and I thank you guys for watching